Now, what is your opinion on ad libs in a song? I feel like ad libs is necessary, man. Um, I feel like ad libs give the record a little bit more comfortability, if if that's the right word I'm looking for. Um, I love doing ad libs. I also understand that there are records who, which absolutely doesn't need ad libs. You know what I'm saying? So I feel, I think it's all up to the artist to know when and um, where to cut ad libs short. With you personally, what's your strategy on it? How do you know when to use ad libs or withdraw from that? Um, I go off the feeling, just off the feeling of the record. Um, nine times out of ten with me, it's usually gonna always be ad lib. So when it's whenever it's a record where I just feel like you know what the ad libs is getting in the way of what I'm or the message I'm trying to relay, then I take them out. But um, you know, it's, it we definitely play it by ear. So let's do a rough estimate here. If there was a circle chart of 100%, what mm -hmm. percentage would you say are songs of yours with ad libs versus none? Um, I'd say about 92%. Have ad libs. Yeah. yeah. Now, when it comes to your ad libs, do you have a signature ad lib by any chance? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, I guess kind of honestly I do because it's, it's, it's a few ad libs that I find myself repeating a lot. Um, so yeah, I definitely got some signature ad libs, but at the same time, like each new record, I try to switch it up and say different stuff, just get different vibes, catch different swags, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really have no set of ad libs that I use specifically. Now, when it comes to collaborating with other recording artists, mm -hmm. have you ever added your ad libs to another artist's verse on that same song? Yeah, I did. I believe me and Sada Baby just, um, shout out to Sada Baby. Me and Sada Baby just, just did like three or four records and on one of the records, I ad-libbed his verse and he ad-libbed my verse. So just doing different stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, not to say that nobody has ever done that before because I, I just don't know whether that's true or not. But I know it's from all my family and friends. We like the first people who was really getting into that. Hold on, you guys, excuse me, forgive me for that last question. What was you asking? Oh, the question I was asking was, when it comes to collaborating with other recording artists, have you ever added your ad-libs okay. to another artist's verse on that same song, and you referenced Sada Baby? Yeah, 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 so me and Sada Baby, um, I'm pretty sure I have did that with a lot of different artists. I think me and Chief Keef did that before too, but to the most recent of my knowledge, me and Sada Baby, one record, I'm doing the ad-libs on his verse and on, and on and on my verse, he's doing the ad-libs on my verse. Now, how does that work? Does the artist, does the other artist ask for that by request or is that just voluntarily done? I mean, I feel like, for example, if you're going in the studio to work with an artist and this is your first time working with an artist, then yeah, I feel like there should be a conversation had. Um, now, for example, when me and Sada Baby did that record, what I did was I went in and I laid the hook down. I stepped out the booth for a smoke break and Sada Baby went in and laid the verse down. So now he's first verse on the record, but I'm on the hook. So he came back out and was like, you fuck with it? I'm like, hell yeah, you killed that shit. And then um, I said, shit, let's go. So I went in and knocked out my verse. I came back out, smoked again. Sada told the engineer, hey, let me do an ad lib track on Trail Verse. I didn't I wasn't opposed to it. I didn't have a problem with it. I was like, oh shit, like, nigga ain't said that in a minute. Let me see how bruh sound ad lib in my verse. That's actually dope. Yeah, nah, go ahead in there, do it. Let's see how it sounds. So for example, we didn't have a conversation. It, we we was just in the moment. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like sometimes people do have conversations about stuff like that because a lot of artists are very extremely picky, you know. Now, what are your thoughts on songs with just a featured artist ad libs, but no hook or verse from them? Repeat that question. I'll give you an example. Okay. Kanye West has a song called Can't Tell Me Nothing. Jeezy mm -hmm. ad libs, but no hook or verse from Jeezy on oh, that song. What's your opinion of that? That was dope. That was different. Never witnessed that before. Um, 
I know what records you talking about. That who did it, did it, uh uh, you can't tell me nothing. Yeah, like, I remember that record. So, that's a great idea. I'm pretty sure, well, I take that back, because I was just about to be biased and say, I'm pretty sure that was Kanye West's idea. I shouldn't say that, because it could have been Jesus' idea. But that was a genius idea. Um, I believe that may be the first group of artists I ever seen do that. Now, there are other examples of this as well that have come out since that record. Mm -hmm. But has an artist ever requested just your ad libs on their song? Or maybe vice versa. Maybe you want or wanted another artist ad libs, but no hook or verse from them on a particular song of yours. Yes, um, I've done I've done ad lib only features before. Yes, I have. Um, it's very common. It's very common. Now, is there, is that, how does that happen? Do they, does an artist just ask you, I just want your ad libs on this song, no hook or verse from you? Yeah, basically, pretty much be open okay. and honest up front. I feel like that's the best way. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to send you a record and be like, hey, yo, kill this. And then when you kill it and when you send it back to me, I erase your whole verse but keep your ad libs and put them on my verse. Then we release the record. You're going to be looking at me crazy like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Versus if I come to you open and honest up front, hey, bro, I got this hard ass record. You ain't got to do a hook, verse, or nothing. I just need you to ad lib my verse, bro. You can have a conversation like that. He can only tell you one or two things. Shit, let's go, nigga. Or nah, I can't do that. He can only tell you one or two things. You now, the first time you were proposed that idea, did you take any offense to it? Did you feel any disrespect that they just wanted your ad libs? Honestly, no, I didn't. Here's why. First of all, I was being paid. So money, when, when, when money involved, you know, all these different politics and different rules don't don't apply. That's first of all. Second of all, um, I wasn't offended because that was the first time it was ever asked of me. So I felt it felt good to do something different. Then when I heard the record and I did it, I see where he was coming from. I see where he was going with it. So it was a pleasure to do that. And care to share the name of that record? I can't even remember, bro. I'd be I'd be lying to you if I gave you a, a name. Or who the artist was? I believe the artist was Oom P from New York. Shout out to Oom P, the whole Uwe. Shout out to Bronx, Cortland Ave. No. You know, Park Ave, Cortland Projects. Shout out to the OBX. Now, speaking of being paid for ad libs, mm -hmm. is the rate for your ad libs the same as a featured verse? Of course not. They're just ad libs. I look at that like that would kind of be greedy if you charged. And again, I'm only one artist. You know, I think today we see on social media, we see so many artists talk about what they is and what they ain't doing. If it ain't a bad by the bag, I respect that. Don't get me wrong. I understand where they coming from because this business can be very phony and fake. So you do get to a point where you just say, look, man, I'm here to collect my check. I'm leaving. I don't want to kick it. I don't want to take shots, take pictures, shoot videos, none of that. I understand where people be coming from when they say stuff like that. Just for transparency, do you know Kanye West or Jeezy personally, by any chance? No, I do not. I met Jeezy before in Atlanta. Never met Kanye before. Care to share how you met Jeezy? Um, it's crazy, I met Jeezy, um, this was a long time ago, man. Like this was before I got signed with Maybach and all that. I was in Atlanta. Um, I remember I had a meeting with uh, Coach K. Um, you know, I'm real young. Don't know what the name Coach K mean to the streets of Atlanta or to the music industry, period. Um, I remember that that was around that time they was working with the producer, Lil Lodi. Lodi had the hardest beats out at that time right then and there. So they had locked me in the studio with Lil Lodi. And um, I believe like eventually I, uh, I did some hours or a day or two um, they had introduced me to Jeezy. Cool nigga. He was in and out like a robbery, which I expect, so but he was cool though. And that was the only time you met? To my knowledge, yeah. And what ended up happening with that situation with Coach K? Um, you know, that's a great question, man. I had a real janky, real extremely janky manager at that time. Lord knows what 
Lord knows what was in the pay. I mean, I said the pay. Lord knows what was in the contract. Lord knows what my manager, extra incentives he forced in or added to. Nobody knows. You know what I'm saying? So, um, learning experience for me. Um, don't regret a single thing. Ross is my big homie forever. Wale and Meek like brothers, Stoddy like brothers, Tracy, check up on my dog to this day. We like brothers, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really have no regrets about the past.